Hi guys and welcome. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this, which we will just focus on for you. And this is an automatic watch winder. Um, I've been toying with the idea for some time now of, uh, of getting an automatic watch winder. The main reason I've wanted one of these for a while is because of the Orients and the Seiko 5s which typically use a non-manual winding automatic movement. So for example as you can see with this one here you can turn that dial all day long and it's it's not going to do a thing. You can pull it out and set the hands and put it back in and turn it and it doesn't manually wind. It has to be worn, you have to spin the rotor to get this to wind and it's impractical to sit there doing this with a watch that you don't wear every day, you know, um, to wind it up. So watches like these either need to be worn or need to be kept on a winder. You can also get a, a sort of professional lab type one, if you will, that you'll often see in professional watchmakers shops which have a stand with arms that look, funnily enough, like this. The difference is they cost a lot of money. This is um, a good old Chinese copy, um, Tianzhu, apparently. Um, a good old Chinese copy for considerably less. This particular one is from Banggood and was 32, 33 pound. Maybe £34, something like that, but um, but a little more than 30 and under £35 shipped, which, provided it works and it's, and it's decent, is excellent. So, let's uh, pop open the box and see what we have. We have a set of six clips with their associated arms. And these are sprung steel with a little pad for your watch back to clip your watches onto. So this will hold up to six watches. And then we have the unit itself. Cable with a two pin plug. And a switch which looks like a just like a straightforward on off switch with Chinese characters. Uh, the unit actually looks really nice and sturdy. Let's uh, focus on that. So yeah the unit itself actually looks really nice and sturdy and I'm pleased to see I can actually see just by just by rotating that. I wasn't sure but I know the ones that you see um, that you typically see in professional watchmaker shops they rotate but these also rotate so you've got your spring arms fastened onto them like so and as this turns around like this at the same time these these arms will rotate like this the only other thing to mention with this before we put this together and test it is you get this plug adapter and these plug adapters you commonly get with goods from China and what you want to do with this is that and get yourself a decent one because they suck. So that's all the uh, the arms connected, six of those. Um, so as you can see it gives you quite a few uh, a few to go at and obviously you can swap watches around. These are a sprung, these as you can see there. So you've got the little pad to protect your watch back and you've got these sprung steel bits which will obviously expand and grip your strap. And also quite uh, nice to notice there's a couple of spare little uh, wing nuts for connecting these arms in case you lose any, which is a nice little touch. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to unwrap the power cord, get myself a plug adapter, and then I'm going to plug this in and we'll give it a try. Here in front of the camera now, we have the winder set up ready to use. And as you can see, there are some watches fitted on there. The spring clip bracelet simply squeeze in, the watch slides over that and fastens on. Um, the Winder doesn't come with a holder, but it has a hook as uh, as you can hopefully see just up here an eyelet at the top there Which allows you to hang that from any convenient cup hook or anything of that type even just a simple peg or what have you 
uh, in the in the wall a piece of wood or something similar. I made a rudimentary stand from a an old grill pan surround, uh, which happened to be handy, good thick uh, steel, and and it means that I can move this stand to wherever I want it. It really doesn't matter what what you use, however, as I say, you can hang that on the wall on a cup hook or similar, no problem, and. On the winder we have uh, up here an, an Orient, which is a, an automatic wind only. Down here we have a Seiko 5, which I picked up from a flea market in Germany. That's automatic wind only also. Down here we have the Vostok Kommanderskia, which I reviewed in my previous video, uh, which is automatic and manual wind. But if you want to take a look at uh, the review on this, this is a new watch, first new manual uh, watch, uh, mechanical watch that I've bought in a good while. This one down here is an Omax with an AS2066 uh, movement, uh, another lovely little watch, manual and automatic wind. And then over here we have another Seiko 5, which is automatic wind only. Now, all of them, with the exception of this Seiko 5 over here, have actually run down and I've deliberately let them run down from their wind to uh, so that we can start this off and hopefully relatively quickly we should see them start to tick. So I'm just going to switch it on down here. And as you can see, that's turning away quite happily. And as mentioned previously, in addition to rotating um, counterclockwise and clockwise, it will, it will rotate the other way as well. It doesn't do that automatically. You have to switch it off and back on. And it seems some, somewhat intermittent as to, um, as to when it chooses to do that. It doesn't seem to be every single time you switch it off and on. And uh, the Vostok is ticking away already, as you can see there. And are either of the other two just now? Not at the moment, but it's, it's going to take a few rotations to get that oscillating weight moving and get them ticking. And it's relatively quiet. There's actually a bit more of a hum. I have powered this up with it laid flat on the desk and it's it's very quiet but I'm getting a little bit more vibration but the, it's the vibration that's coming through this stand that I've made it's not so loud as to be intrusive or disturbing in any way I'm going to unclip my mic which is uh, clipped to my top just under my chin here I'm going to unclip this and put it next to the machine so you can hear what that sounds like So hopefully the sound of this will come across. As I say, it is very, very quiet. You could happily work away in the same room, possibly even sleep in the same room as this while it was running. And I suspect if I hold the mic down by the desk, you might pick up a bit more of the vibration noise. I'm not sure how well that's going to come through on the video. If you can't hear it, then that's even better. If you can, then obviously you'll be aware that there is a little bit of noise there, but it's really not too bad, not too noticeable. And I think you could quite easily, I think I could quite easily sleep in the same room as that while it was running without a problem at all. And that's what happens when you don't tighten the arms properly. As you can see, the Vostok's still ticking away there. Good old tough Russian watches, eh? I'm just going to stop this video and, uh, and reconnect, reconnect and retighten that. Here's the watch winder with the Vostok refastened down here, as you can see. And uh, it transpires that that was actually my fault because when I assembled the movement in my excitement and haste, uh, I didn't notice that in the middle of the wing nuts was also a hex head. So it's not just a solid wing nut bolt. Uh, it's actually a wing nut that's fastened 
with a, an interference fit onto a hex head grub screw and I tightened it to what I thought was, was suitably adequate with the wing nut and what had happened also is you'll notice I've had a reshuffle on here and I've, I've actually moved the Seiko 5 with the metal bracelet and the Omax around so that more of the weight is, is opposite the Vostok because the Vostok is currently the heaviest watch on the machine. And common sense says you've got to try and counterbalance with roughly equal sort of weights, otherwise you will get a vibration and a, and a, a misbalance. And with a combination of not being adequately tightened and the vibration, and it's worked this this holder has just gradually wiggled its way loose until it dropped out. So uh, no fault of the machine, entirely my own, but if you have yourself a little Allen wrench, put all the arms in and then just give them a nip up with an Allen wrench in the central portion of the wing nut, as you can see as these rotate, as you'll just show you there like so. And uh, and you're okay. You'll be you'll be okay, um, and that'll be nice and securely fastened. So we've got the sticker on the front, which mentions calibers, different caliber sizes, and it shows rotations. It shows that it will rotate counterclockwise and clockwise. This happens when you switch on and switch off. It doesn't seem to do it every single time. I'm just going to try. So it's it's not done it there or there. And it's, it's just not going to do it for me at all. Oh, there we go. It has. Um, I say, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is supposed to change rotation with every time you switch off and switch on. I'm really not sure. Uh, but to be honest, I'm quite happy with it just winding one way. On the subject of winding one way, if you have a watch with a unidirectional winder, it, will, it actually specifies on here it needs to rotate counterclockwise, it says they're mono and it shows a counterclockwise arrow. And the reason for this is if your watch is moving counterclockwise, then your oscillating weight is moving clockwise. And every unidirectional winding mechanism I've seen in, in every watch with one, it rotates clockwise as you're looking at the face, as you're looking at the dial of the watch, which is obviously counterclockwise if you're looking at the back of the watch. So that's something you need to bear in mind. So I'm just going to see if I can flick that back the other way, there we go. It always it seems to be um, much happier to flick back to counterclockwise than onto clockwise. So I say I can't see that being a huge concern to most people, but just something worth bearing in mind because it doesn't seem to do it um, with every switch off and switch back on. I don't know why that is. Uh, as I said, the the machine doesn't come with instructions, so unfortunately, there's nothing nothing in there that will specify the whys and wherefores of that. But it's, uh, it's humming away quite nicely. All of the watches are ticking away with, uh, I think, is the, is the Seiko going or? Um, no, I, I did actually, I have actually tried to give that a bit of a tap to encourage it, but it's still, it's still not quite, uh, quite there yet. But as I say, that's, that watch needs a service, most definitely. But all the others are ticking away now quite happily as they should do. And the intention with this for myself, as I say, is, is purely, well, it's primarily for my Seiko 5 and Orient watches, which are all auto wind, because you can't manually wind them. Uh, but I will probably use them for some of my auto watches, which, which I can manually wind, depending on uh, swapping them out and what have you. But I plan to put this onto a timed plug so that it will switch on for a couple of hours every night in an evening. So it will switch on, it will rotate for a couple of hours, switch itself off. And that way I'm not having to manually remember to switch it on and off all the time. And that way it will keep my watches wound. And I would rather do that than have uh, several of these display box winders because typically you will only get um, a display box with a couple of winders in at the most. So I'd rather have that than several of these, which do a couple of rotations one way, wait for five minutes, couple of rotations the other way, wait for five minutes and so on. This way, you know, you're getting two good solid hours of rotations and winding and uh, and the plug timers are very, very cheap as well. So it's nice and easy to do. I have a suspicion that the Bergen arms would fit straight into this. I don't know for certain, 
Um, anyone got uh, has a version machine and wants to take some measurements that I can compare against, please feel free to pop it in the comments below and, uh, and I will happily do that. So the box is, as you saw earlier in the review, is very version-like, uh, the label, the colour and everything else, as they tend to do when they do uh, copies of of various tools uh, with the Chinese sellers. But that pretty much sums it up. It looks good. If there is a need to do an update, if anything goes wrong with this or it, it fails to operate as it should, I will do an update to say so. But otherwise, it's all looking good. I'm now going to set it up in, uh, in my other room where I, I keep my watches so that I remember to wind them at night and uh, I, I do try to wind all my watches nightly and obviously the automatic ones that I can't wind tend to sit there but now I know that I will be able to keep them wound and, uh, and I will report back if necessary but hopefully this video will be useful um, including the link below to a lot of amateur horologists and, uh, and potential watchmakers um, who have a collection of automatic watches. So thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.